we are going to finish our 1973 podcast with the redemption film. Was it really that bad? And our redemption podcast today is going to be focused on Live and Let Die, which is something you may have forgotten was an actual movie because you know the theme song written by Paul McCartney and his wife, Linda McCartney. One of the best theme songs ever. The first Roger Moore Bond. James, wow, James. James, Sean Connery turned down five and a half million dollars, which is equivalent to about $30 million today. (laughs) <laughs> because he was tired of it it would have been a seventh one he didn't want to do it anymore even for 30 million dollars i don't know about you i think it would have taken the 30 million dollars and bought a villa in it's italy but it's just me guys we have jack lemon jack nicholson robert redford marlon brando al pacino we've got people making movies oh i was like <laughs> what's I didn't what is see going them in this on with movie. this so live and let die comes out and it's like wait but we have roger moore and you know what we're gonna do we're gonna throw him in harlem this is our yeah and then maybe a little bit new orleans let's see if people still think this is the same bond yes yeah. <laughs> this, this right. movie come on tell me tell me this movie is not monty python off. does bond this movie I mean, is yeah. monty python does yeah. bond Buzz for that. yeah let's lean into it right now this is my favorite bond music introduction with the opening sequence if, i think it's my yes. favorite one and it's my least favorite bond movie that i've ever seen mm. for that. <laughs> i uh all right, let's just can we just get it out in the open at the beginning here? Let me drink real fast. No, that's not James a Bond, James drink. Bond. You still have to drink when you get buzzed. No, no, he, he, drink, he drinks. I buzz. just drink. James Bond movies okay. are tough to watch nowadays. Like they always Dude, made no, me a little no, uncomfortable. Need, come on, we don't we don't need the hate. No, mail, no, no, right? fuck you. We mail. have got to acknowledge that. How many times it's, did it's he a walk up behind fest. a woman? <laughs> He walked up behind every woman that's in that movie, put his hands on her, turned her around, and like kissed her. Like it, so, oh, there's a little bit. Don't forget, of, like, don't forget the reassuring well. pat on the butt well. on the boat. Like, yeah, you've yep. done a good job. Yep. So yeah, we we can move past that. That turned, like, of that turned that my stomach weird. a little bit, but yeah. So it was a little just, weird. Just, just there's, there's just, a warning. <laughs> yeah, just knowing that it was Roger Moore too. Like they didn't handle it very delicately the first time they were handing over it to a new actor. So it wasn't like you were used to this guy, that particular human being, like acting like that. You know, he's James Bond, but I don't know. Um. I just didn't. I thought it was really devicey. I thought that they were. I appreciated that they. I liked the villain's turn. Like, I kind of liked how they were operating in multiple places on planet Earth. I liked that it all really just boiled down to drugs and money in a more, like, you know, logistical approach to it wasn't about the voodoo it wasn't about the magic like i was glad that they kind of dropped that about halfway through so that it was more about how this businessman was making it happen but i don't know i just didn't uh you know it it was so formulaic in the the original book it wasn't heroin it was gold he was going to flood the market with gold and they changed like a, it to heroin. To change it to like a resource economy? To like try to yeah. turn it into a resource well, and then, economy? Yeah. And, then, and, then, and then in Enter the Dragon, it's opium. So what is up with drugs going on in 1973? Is that when the, the war 70s, on drugs bro. started? It's the 70s. No, like, the war on drugs. Well, yeah, it was Nixon. It, you're right, it was. And then... And then the Nancy Reagan took it up yeah, and on. Yeah, anyway. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know. Can anyway. you guys tell me, are, are, yeah. are either of you huge Bond connoisseurs? I... I thought I was, to be honest with you. I've, because I've watched I, a lot of them. I've seen a lot of them, too. Okay, so to I, answer, tell me this then, because I am I watched my fair share of James Bond growing up whenever the marathons came on. Uh, I've probably seen Roger Moore way less than I've seen um, the, the other main ones, Pierce, Sean, yeah. or Daniel. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen the fourth or fifth guy. Who are the other two? No, Lazy B only did one movie. Yeah, he only did, did he only one movie. One? And it's good. It's a pretty good movie. Um, in His Majesty's okay. Service, I think. In His Majesty's Secret Service. Yeah, yeah. Um, are most that, and of that's, the... that's the one that was shot by another studio, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it, was it, was, it was a giant. Studio. It was not a. Bro- you, it's yeah. the only non-broccoli film. Yeah. So are most. So are most of the Bond movies the same movie? What? <laughs> Come on! I I've said it's about Mission Impossible, and you guys gave me so much shit. I was like, Mission Impossible is Bond, but American. And you guys gave me so much shit about it. And here we are. I didn't. It's not the same one. The reason this one's <laughs> yet, different is because there's nobody Russian and nobody German. I'm sorry. You no, said you that. You, I mean. you still voted it through. 
No, you know what I mean. Like, right, for, and, it, and it deserved. Yeah, it came yeah. No, it. I thought we, but we defended you, and then you agreed, and you, you, you got on board. It subverted a lot of those formulaic like cliches. Is this? Are we? Is a, this are we in an argument right now? Same, I can't tell. Is this what? Are we in is an this, argument right now? I can't even tell. <laughs> no, wait. We're we're always a little bit in an argument, but I can't find. I, I can't tell if the formula. Because I, I can't. I was trying to remember the last time I had watched one of the Sean Connerys. Because obviously, if this came like right after it. Did the latter Sean Connerys or the initial Sean Connerys, were they all the exact same formula? Bond is existing somewhere, really the exposition of, of M or somebody coming to him, telling him to do something. He gets involved in a skirmish and then gets wrapped up into it. He meets the girl. Yeah. And there's you and like I mean, they they're known as Bond girls for a reason. They usually start on the villain's side and come across to his side. Yeah. It's it's entirely formulaic every single time. It's the same thing. So why did there's no so what, M. This is the only movie that M didn't appear in. Or Q, sorry, Q. And it's yeah. just so annoying because he only gets one gadget, which is this watch. Give him some fucking gadgets. Come yeah, on. They just, yeah, I mean, I don't know what the decision the, was. And yet the, the villains had plenty of yeah. them. Like almost every fucking prop of, in this movie had a microphone, a camera, or a gun in it. Yeah, those fucking voodoo things. Also, I'm pissed <laughs> off at the stunts in this. The stunts were trash, which is funny because you have boat crashes, you have plane crashes, and then you have like this little voodoo doll that like shoots a girl, and then later you see her like lying dead. And you're like, she, she's running. So there's a girl who's running. So picture a girl running. And then all of a sudden you see a little voodoo doll head that like shoots a gun, and then you just see a girl on the floor. Fucking it's like dead. The, I could have yeah. made that in my I could have I could have made that in my like college dorm room. Like, how did that happen immediately? No, seriously. But then this but then this movie has like a plane sequence where cars and planes and, and a boat that goes on land. How many times did a boat just hop land? Man, it just literally went from like the from like yep. the lake to the ravine over. <laughs> <laughs> Went through a wedding ceremony. So apparently they really wanted to incorporate humor into this movie. I don't know why they failed, but like they really wanted to put something funny into this movie. And you know what's not very funny is a bumbling, idiotic James Bond who's out of place. <laughs> That's how the movie started. No, some of it's good and some of it he's suave. But he like he's getting totally played by this Harlem crew also you could tell i mean yeah there's like is the first bond like interracial kiss there's a lot for like non-white casting in this apparently you know the the even though they were on the quote-unquote villain side with bond it's never quite so simple like nobody's ever pure evil or pure good so there's a lot of complex characters um a very diverse cast is is really really interesting that way lowercase they make, c's, <laughs> lower case c's yeah. but then they but then they make they make these jokes where they're like, gee, I really like your disguise. And Bond's like, what disguise? And he, they're like, you're wearing a white face in Harlem. And it's like, really? This is where Bond is going right now? It really feels like an SNL sketch. It's like, James Bond is poor in Harlem. And it's like him like bumbling around in Harlem with this with this crew. It, it's just, it's, it's, yeah. it, it was really strange. Now, some of the action sequences are really cool. Bond is Bond. But it's missing a lot of the stuff. It, it's, it's, it's missing a lot of the stuff. Now, Roger Moore did make Moonraker. He made Octopussy. Yeah, I've um, seen those. He has great yeah. sidekicks like Jaws or mm. uh, Mr. Larson, as I know him from um, Happy Gilmore. Like, I believe great- that belongs <laughs> to Mr. Gilmore. Oh, my God. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> and I'll see you, and you can, in the parking lot. And you lot. can count on me <laughs> seeing you in the parking lot. Yeah, Mr. Larson. <laughs> that that oh. yell when he takes the- And it doesn't matter. That's not even in this movie. Um Okay, I don't want to hate on this. I don't want to see. I don't want to be sad. This is it, it, this movie is funny bad. I'll put it that way. This movie's funny bad. Bond is getting tailed by people that are smarter than him. You don't see that very often. Also, apparently, Bond's the entire MI6 is like one friend of Bond's who's never concerned. There's he literally has lines like, "Gee, where's our friend?" And I was like, "I don't know. His life is in your hand, motherfucker." Like this is a spy. <laughs> this is a spy who is beyond enemy lines. He is he is inside his inside enemy lines, and they're like, "Gee, I, I thought our friend would have scuba dived out by now. What's what's happening here?" And it's like, "Figure it out. That's your job." Your job is to keep it alive. This is my best. Also, this is my of... best. This is my best analogy. Live and Let Die is the Lacroix of James Bond movies. <laughs> Lacroix, no. <laughs> it's like Did you say Lacroix. I know. I know, I know. Yeah, I know that's all... that's some shit you need a face mask for. <laughs> I know all the elements are there, and because I know what you mean, Jeff. Like, there's some comedic. There's like a comedic tone to it, and. I know that there was a little bit of campiness in the old Connery versions. 
I, I'm not saying they were like super grounded in drama or anything like that, but this right. one took itself even less seriously, which right. I couldn't quite tell if that made me feel like it was a little offensive to the cultures that it was yeah. dealing with. You see, oh, yeah. you see his, you see his apartment and he's a bad host. He like has the shitty espresso <laughs> machine and you're sitting there. You're like, this is James fucking Bond. And he's like, Hey, look what I can do. <laughs> Also, he all put the espresso comes he, out. He's like, oh, he put the milk think? in the coffee and then frothed it. Can we quote Happy Gilmore? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. This, yeah. Oh, wait, okay. There, here's this, here's a sequence that he goes full Pepe Le Pew at one point. Okay, so he he <laughs> arrives in this. They go to this. Okay, we think about the stakes. Most of these Bond movies, it's like Russian warheads, like Civil War era. Bond has to stop um, the 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 Cold War from becoming a hot war and saving humanity. This, they go to a fictional land that's basically Jamaica, but they don't call it Jamaica because they had apparently already used J- Jamaica, but they wanted to basically use the same like stereotypes of what they what these very white writers were writing of Jamaican people. So they made it like San Marco. I forget what the name of the island was. San Monique. Yeah, San, San Lucia. San, San Manasquan. Something. Send something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. No, there's, nobody cares. It doesn't matter. They out. end up in New Orleans. <laughs> and they didn't even do New Orleans. If you're going to do New Orleans, do New Orleans. Don't just give me one jazz band who actually everybody's just a, a, a patsy for this fucking group that's like carrying a dead body around. Like, <laughs> get, get, let me see New Orleans. We were in New Orleans just to play like 30 seconds of like a fucking like, like, yeah, cut. it was one. And then it we, was one then gag. Out. Get the fuck out of here. Let's go to New Orleans. Do this. Do James Bond in New Orleans. Don't cop out, you motherfuckers. Anyway, <laughs> so he, he's like, he's like with this woman. <laughs> Woman, first Bond interracial kiss. Kiss. I guess they probably patted themselves in the back, thinking they were such trailblazers for that innovators. And then he pulls a gun on her right away because she might be a spy. And she <laughs> goes, "It's not my dude. fault." Yeah. And he goes full fucking Pepe Le Pew because he's like saying her, he's like, "Oh, darling, oh, darling." And, and they have known each other for twelve hours. He's already like seduced. She's like, "How could you do that to me?" And then turn on me. And it's like, "Come on, it's been twelve hours. You do not have a love story." And then she just runs away. She just escapes from him. And then he, instead of like firing the gun, this is what he does. <laughs> he stands up and stares out into the distance and goes, Rosie. And then he starts running after her. It's like a fucking Chevy Chase meets Pepe Le Pew. And this is a Bond movie. It's trash. It's terrible trash. And then she does what I said before, which is she dies off camera. And it's like, get the fuck out of here with this bullshit. Like, come on. Just give me some boat sequences and cut it into like a 10 minute reel and say, we had money and we filmed this. It was fun. Here's Roger Moore. Roll Paul McCartney. That's what this movie probably should have been. No, I, I agree. <laughs> Dave, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, that line that line bothered me. All right, I I mean I I made a few observations. Um, it, like it starts off with with an agent being killed by the um. Oh yeah, we didn't talk Baron, about that, yeah. the Baron Samiti character. Um, and he kills him by basically threatening him with him with a fucking rubber snake, and. Holds it to his face and goes, ah, and the, the, like, and the guy reacts and like, you look at his cheek and there's no marks there. I'm like, how fucking sharp were those snake's teeth? It didn't even leave a mark. And yeah. this guy's like, ah, dead. Get like another five take, you guys. What are you doing? Yeah. Take one more. I did, I did, I did. The thing I do love about 70s movies is they, like, when you went somewhere, you had to go to that location. You couldn't fake it. So, like, right. when they go to New York and he's driving, he's, it's like, driver picks him up from the airport and they're driving and then his driver is immediately assassinated (laughs) while driving the car and they're (laughs) smashing out he's swerving he's smashing up other cars and i was like wow the drive down the fdr hasn't really changed has it has changed oh yeah (laughs) but at least that was bond like buzz yourself for that you motherfucker ripping on you (laughs) but 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 at least that was Bond-esque. What wasn't was. Bond-esque was check the medallion of your cab. He ends up in like 10, meda- 10 cabs that are all compromised. And it's really, like, yes. you oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love how the he, licenses. Wait, wait, Sorry. Wait, wait. I love okay. how he, when he wrecks that car, I mean, yeah. that is a brutal car. He has yeah. no seatbelt on. He's steering from the back yeah, seat right. and it cuts to him and he's just standing completely <laughs> scratchless. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's fine. He's totally okay. fine. And then, and then yeah. So, yeah. some of my favorite, though, was like he turns up at his hotel. After going through all this, like, I'd be immediately suspicious. Like a lot of people around me have died and he's turned up at his hotel and they're like, Mrs. Bond's already checked in. And he's like, oh, Mrs. Bond. And they're like, yeah. So he goes up to his hotel room. What's the first thing he does? I'm going to take a bath. Yeah. What the fuck yeah, is he doing in this fucking bath? bath. He, hasn't even, he hasn't even like checked the corners. He hasn't scanned the room. Like nothing. He's immediately like going to put himself which in then, a vulnerable Which bath. then leads to, <laughs> and when they get a load of this, leads to fucking trained assassin snakes. <laughs> Assassin's Snake. Assassin's I know. Snakes. Assassin's Snake. That was cool how he handled that snake. I mean, 
I don't know, you oh, guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's... I think I'm also just, after us praising Mission Impossible so hard, I, I hadn't seen any of the Bonds since we watched all those Mission Impossibles. And I think it just kind of made me think back to everything we were saying that was why we love the Mission Impossible so much. I feel like until Daniel Craig, until these reboots, they didn't even try to make you care about Bond as a human being. It was mm. just the fun, which is fine. Like, I'm totally down for having fun. But again, this one felt like it was starting to trespass into an uncomfortable place just because if you're going to try to introduce the first Black Bond girl and have an interracial kiss and have an, the whole villain and the society around them be mostly in Black islands or a Black neighborhood in New Orleans or New York, and you have this tone and this style, it, it felt a little offensive to me. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what it was like? I'm it was like that, it, it, was, that was. It was like yeah. um, it was like um, Gold Member, where it's like Foxy Cleopatra, and it's like this like yeah. But but it's like they it's like they put Foxy Cleopatra in a legitimate Bond movie that wasn't. I was that say, yeah, I feel like Foxy Cleopatra was handled with more respect than anybody in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Also, I mean, I just want to bring it up. How the fuck is he smoking a cigar and a hang glider? Mm. I Why mean, is he oh trying to be wait, incognito wait, yeah, wait, and he's the, in hang gliding? Wait, the he's covert, hang gliding. On, he's like trying on, to be. Hold on. The covert hang gliding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how the no, fuck is I wrote down that is one of the worst kills in movie history is him <laughs> kicking the guy from the hang glider. He's He kicks him. <laughs> it looks like a dummy. It looks like they're using a puppet and, he, and he's oh hang gliding God. towards this guy. It's like, Urgh! and then it goes he and he lands, like kind of. That it's thing like, is like 16 feet wide when he finally lands like right in front of the entrance to the uh-huh. lair. Like nobody. Saw, there was only one guard Nobody watching saw it. bullshit, Nobody saw dude. It. And that is the longest cigar but, that I mean, has it, ever it's, been smoked before. Yeah, it's obviously, <laughs> like, obviously the guards are on break or something because he he comes down, he flies in, he jumps off, he gets back in his suit, and he sneaks into the stronghold, and he's like, all right, I've just struck, snuck into the enemy stronghold. I'm going to take a break and bang Jane Seymour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. why is he, he's banging all these people? Okay, the lover's line, when, they, when so she's a voodoo person who, like, reads these weird tarot card things, and, like, James Bond is finally, he finally gets up to... to Jane Seymour, who's like working for the enemy here, and she's like their voodoo reader because her mom was or whatever. And then she, they're like, he like tries to seduce her, and then he's like, well, maybe we should pull our card, and he pulls it, and it's like the lovers, and he's like, you already knew this was the card, didn't you though? And then they start like making out, and then you find out that all the cards are the lovers, and then they have sex, and it's like this is the dumbest fucking way of 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 getting laid I've ever seen on. Screen. <laughs> And it's funny because, let's be real, he is kind of smooth. Like, under a different circumstance, you can see this guy being smooth and and grabbing. That's why I'm not faulting. That's why I'm not I'm not faulting Roger Moore. I didn't really mind Roger Moore. Like he didn't choose to be a terrible house guest. Hmm. He didn't choose to to have that terrible way to get her to sleep with him. Like he didn't choose any of this. So I don't blame Roger Moore. I like Moonraker. I like this whole. I like yeah, Moonraker's cool. This whole thing yeah, is guns, a film that just didn't something. know what it was. Like it started off yeah. as kind of a Bond film and then somehow turns into the last 30 minutes of the Blues Brothers on water. Oh my God. And the climbing over crocodiles and shit. Dave, hmm. do you think they like wrote the script for Sean Connery and then when they cast Roger Moore, they went, oh no. And they tried to like make all these changes quick. Like what, what do you think happened? Like it and, had to have been lost in translation something, right? I'm, I don't think so. I think this was the movie they they set out to make. I, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, and the crocodiles. I mean, good, the crocodiles. Good, thing good is for terrible. them. You go, Glenn Coco. Apparently, an extra actually had to get like a hundred stitches because he actually did the legitimate stunt over the crocodiles. Was it really worth it? That was the like, guy that no, that was the guy that owned the alligator farm. Yeah, who happened to be the stunt double for? Yeah. yeah. And they named anyway, the, the main, dress, the dress and, they, and the, they named the main villain after him for that. Right, which is cool. Now, the, the dress unzipping with the one fucking gadget that he had, which is this yeah. magnetic watch. One gadget that he had. Even the hang glider wasn't a gadget. Like, come on. So the one gadget he had, he can unzip a dress with it, which is the only real cool thing he did with it the whole movie. I know it became functional later, but I, I was already falling asleep by that point. Yeah. Um, the best part about the movie is that a shrimp roll is only 50 cents. That was really cool in the restaurant. You could see up the board of all the prices that they go to, and uh, the prices looked really great. Yeah, I got pretty um, hungry. The thing I think the thing that bugged me the most about this was like they had a great idea for the soundtrack. Let's write the most amazing theme song ever. 
and use it and over and over again. Use it God damn it, Dave. What would they have done without again. it? What would, this movie, what would this movie have been without that, without that song used a oh hundred times quiet, throughout? Huh? <laughs> and the director didn't want to use McCartney's version because he thought yeah. that... So a girl sings it at a, at a bar later. Um, and he liked her version better than McCartney's. And McCartney said, I'm pulling the song if you don't let me sing it in the opening credits. And so they said, fine. <laughs> But the, the director almost didn't let McCartney use the song. Yeah. They almost walked. I mean, they wrote the song and then they almost walked. If that's not a sign that your director's not in his right fucking mind, then what is? <laughs> her version. Her version is really cool. I did. I did. Her version. I did, kinda, I did awesome. like that. Yeah, I did also, really like yeah. that version. Anyway, but anything else we want to say about this? Like, because nobody's going to see this after seeing this podcast. Yeah, no, nothing <laughs> positive. Yeah. There's not, they there's probably nothing, shouldn't anyway. Nothing it's positive, dated. So, yeah, just, don't watch this. Um, movie. Yeah, start, there's, there's another good Roger Moore. Just the Bond start, series. Start is with fine. Four dollars. Four dollars. I'll start never with see Craig. again. Four dollars. I feel like there's like five movies. The Lazenby one's not bad. I feel like um, Golden Eye's worth a watch for Pierce, but then the the other three you could skip. Yeah, they get a little uh, ridiculous. Yeah, that's it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I think that's all we got. We don't need to overdo this one here. Yeah. Um, don't see this one. If if you're watching a Bond marathon, take a pee break for about two hours when this one's we, on. We tried to redeem it. This is the one you sleep through at the marathon. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like in the marathon, I always got the same ones. I would always turn it on, and it was always the Spy Who Loved Me or You Only Live Twice or You Only Die Twice, or whatever that one is. Yeah, the Golden I Gun. Like, yeah. Like I the never classics. saw that one on the re. I had to like find that one. But whenever I was doing the rewatch, it was always the same ones. Really? Anyway. Hmm. Doesn't matter. I, I I grew up with Pierce Brosnan. I saw all of the Pierce Brosnans so, in the theater. 